Welcome back. This is our second week of reviewing the secret history of home economics. We're going to jump to after World War II, what happened after World War II in the history of home economics. So you'll want to go watch the other two videos I've already recorded or more better. Go ahead and download this audiobook or get this book or listen to the podcast associated with this. So in the first podcast, I explained my history my dad's family, my mom's family, where I come to this home economics degree. The fact that four women in my family have all gotten essentially a home economics degree in college. Last time we talked about from the 1800s to 1944, this movement of home economics that really highlighted and raised the importance of the economy of the home and how it really does impact the whole entire world. What happens at home impacts the world. And that when you give women a college degree and put them in the field of science, they're able to make people healthy and, and get food to last longer and, and all of these things. And then World War II ended. And it's like World War II ended like, boom, everything changed, everything changed. So I'm gonna read a few experts, excerpts. I'm in chapter seven, it says, from coveralls to house coats. After World War II, like those bureau patterns, women's lives in the US changed quickly from coveralls to lab and lab coats to house coats. Wartime jobs ended and women had to leave the workforce to make room for veterans. By 18, 1960, more than one third of women married before the age of 20 and two thirds married by the time they were 24. Birth rates bounced up after more than a decade of deprivation and war. The share of female college students fell to one third, down from half the total number of students in 1920. Did you realize half the students in college in 1920s were women? I didn't, I didn't know that. Almost every man aged 25 to 34 worked in the 1950s, but only one third of women. Despite technological advances that made laundry and its like faster and easier, women spent as much time on housework in the 1950s as they had 30 years before, 52 hours a week. Housewifery could be seen as a sign of progress because it meant that men were finally earning enough to support a family. In 1947, an editorial titled Goodbye Mammy, Hello Mom in the new magazine Ebony celebrated that fact. And then also, um, in 1943, Abraham Maslow, I talk about his theory all the time, proposed the now famous hierarchy of needs, which, put, which posted that humans needed first physical essentials of survival, then love, esteem, and self-actualization, that led to Benjamin Spock, that led to Charles Prosner, and that led to the rise of psychology over home economics. Home economics came down, psychology went up. At any rate, the American Home Economics Association concluded after the war that managing personal relationships, not separating light from dark laundry, was a set of skills that a homemaker really needed. Perhaps they thought they had fulfilled the dream of science freeing women from drudgery and that this was the next step. So here now, you wanna know the start of social media? It was 1944. And actually it was a little bit before that, there was this radio show called Kitchen Clatter. It went for years and years and years. And this host of Kitchen Clatter, she was your original podcaster, YouTuber, blogger. And then um, the commercial industry, Betty Crocker and Aunt Jemima and, um, and all of these personalities were created for these brands that wanted to reach home consumers who are now being a homemaker because that was their job. They were supposed to be a homemaker. And so they created these personas. And these personas, like today, are really well crafted and they had a brand to them and they had these all these different things. Like, you know, when you go to Disney World, there are all these regulations for the characters. Like you never see a character out of character at Disney World. They have a whole underground uh, world at Disney where these characters pop up somewhere and all of a sudden they're gone because they go underground and they have a little golf cart. So they go everywhere they need to do and they, they pop up again and they're goofy is always goofy. Like goofy is never not goofy. Um, that is what happened in home economics. We created these personas. We created, well not we, companies created these personas for this shift, for this brand new market of homemakers who now had the luxury to stay home because the men could earn enough money. And this is really where 
we the conversations we're having in the United States today started in 1944, not the, the origins of home economics. That was how women got a college education. That's how women entered the science field. That's how we saved people from starvation and got out of the Great Depression. It was from after that war when we came home and we actually were a country that had plenty. And when you have plenty, you could do things that you don't always, like you can, you can rewrite society. We rewrote society. And now today we are saying, maybe we wanna change that conversation. Fascinating. It's just, it's just fascinating to me. Um, I am, I have realized over the last couple of years that when I started Organize 365, I started it because I was in such a time of despair and my house was a wreck and my life was a wreck and our finances were a wreck and everything was a wreck. And I started an in-home professional organization company and I took back my own life in the book, Organization is a Learnable Skill. And over that course of that year, I was like, oh, okay. And I started as a blog, like a blogger, like it's, like 1944, a blogger, Organize 365. I could write about organization. I'll write about it. I'll write about my story. Then I started a service-based business. Then I created products in order to teach because I have a teaching degree to teach you how to get your home organized. But I never, I never was trying to teach people to get their homes organized so that they could become a stay-at-home mom, which was my dream. I was always teaching people how to get your home organized because I know that every time I've helped someone get their home organized, it gives them time. And when you get time, your time is for whatever you are uniquely created to do. For me, for 20 years, it was to be a stay-at-home mom. Now, for me, for the next hopefully 30 years plus, it's for me to grow this company and reach more people. That's my unique uh, thing that I want to do. What is your unique thing? And Organize 365's mission Yes, is to help you get organized because that is where time comes from. Time today comes from organization that you put in place in the past. Making a better morning routine gives you an extra five to 30 minutes a day. What you do with that five to 30 minutes a day, that's on you. You've got to figure out what you want to do with that time. But that is what organization does. It gives you more time. And then you can start your own movement, become a stay-at-home mom, homeschool your kids, start a foundation, go back to work, travel the work, doesn't matter what you do, but an organized home is always going to make the ability for you to do those things faster and easier. So if you wanna learn more about our system for teaching you how to get your home organized pretty much once and for all, it's called the Productive Home Solution and you can find it at organize365.com.